Okay, so here we are uh, beginning Module 10, and this is the start of Unit 2. And although I introduced some macroeconomic concepts at the end of Unit 1, this is really where macroeconomics begins in earnest. And you'll see the CIGX. That's part of the most important formula for the class, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this PowerPoint. First thing we're going to talk about is the circular flow of economic activity. Um, you can find copies of this in your book. You can find it all over, but I'm going to kind of go through it with you now. So there's two markets in the circular flow, and there's two main groups. The two markets are the, are the resource market and the product market. Um, and the two main groups are households and businesses. Um, and so... Uh, it is a circular flow, so it doesn't really matter where you start, right? Circles have no really beginning or end. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start with households and show how uh, they work with businesses in the resource market, and then we'll work through the product market, and then we'll go into the more uh, detailed circular flow. So in the resource market, sometimes you'll see it referred to as the factor market, households provide their factors of production to businesses. What are the factors of production? We talked about this, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Okay, and they provide these to businesses. What is this saying? Quite simply that, you know, I get up every day, I go to work, I'm providing my labor. Um, somebody rents office space, they're giving their land. Somebody comes up with a new idea, they're giving their entrepreneurship. What do I get in return for working every day? I get wages, okay? And each of the factors of production has a particular uh, cost for businesses that goes with it. For land, we receive rent. For labor, we receive wages. For capital, we receive interest. And for entrepreneurship, we receive profits. And these rent, wages, interest, and profits uh, are costs for businesses. So what takes place in the resource market? Households sell their resources to businesses, their land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And in return, businesses pay them, which represents a cost, rent, wages, interest, and profit. That's the resource market. Now, what happens in the product market? Well, what do businesses provide to households? Businesses provide goods and services to households. I make my money, I go out to dinner, I see a movie, I go to a bar, I buy a t-shirt, whatever. And what do households give businesses in return for those goods and services? We give them expenditures, we pay them money. And this represents revenues for businesses. And so this is the simple circular flow. Basically it says that People go to work every day, provide their resources, and they get paid by the businesses. And then it's important that we take that money that we make from businesses and we give it back to them. And in return, we get our um, goods and services that you know make our lives enjoyable. Okay. And so the important thing to think about here, and I think this is real important uh, when you listen to again, you know, politicians and things like this. If businesses aren't hiring people. Okay, and if households don't have money to spend, this whole thing sort of falls apart or comes to a screeching halt. It's real important that people are able to work so they can make money and then spend that money in businesses. And when businesses have people spending money, they're forced to hire more people. And this keeps our economy rolling along. Okay, so as always, you know, if you don't understand it, please ask me questions tomorrow. Or you can find this in your textbook or you know, anywhere on the internet. This is a very common macroeconomic model. But we're not done here. Okay? There are other factors involved in the macroeconomy, other groups involved in the macroeconomy. Okay? Here you can see on the left side we have households and businesses. Okay? But households don't just give their money to businesses and businesses don't just pay households. Okay? So there are three other groups that we're going to talk about. Banks, the financial sector, 
the government and the foreign sector, all right, foreign countries, okay? Money that households pay to each of these uh, groups are known as leakages from the uh, circular flow. They're money going outside of the circular flow. Yet, these all come back into the circular flow um, at some later date. So, households save, right? When I save money, I'm not giving it back to a business. Who am I giving it to? I'm giving it to a financial institution, okay? So, I give money to banks. What do banks, what's the purpose of banks? What do banks do with the money that they have from their customers? Well, they lend it out to people to invest in businesses, buy houses, buy cars, right? This represents investment, okay? Households pay the government, okay? What do we pay the government? We pay them in the form of taxes, and so the government collects taxes. What does the government do with that tax money? Well, eventually they spend it. They build roads, they fund the military, they may subsidize businesses, okay? This becomes government expenditure. And households don't just buy things from businesses in the United States. They also buy things from foreign countries, okay? And so that money that we send to foreign countries becomes money that we spend on imports, goods coming into the United States. And when foreign countries buy things from our businesses, that becomes exports. And this will become net exports. And so you can see here, we have, I'm going to see if I can use my mouse here. We have consumption right here. That's the C. Investment, I. Government expenditure, G. And export expenditures, X. This becomes um, GDP, what our economy produces in a given year. And that moves us along to what is GDP. This here is your textbook definition of GDP. GDP is the total value of all goods and services produced within the borders of a country in a given year. Okay? Anything that fits that criteria would be counted as part of GDP. Okay? So if an American company is overseas and makes something, that would not be counted as part of the United States GDP because it was not produced within the borders of our country. And vice versa. Okay, so that's GDP. Let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so gross domestic product. First of all, it only includes final goods and services. Okay, what are final goods? Goods that are ready for consumption. Nothing else has to go into them. Okay, a car, a book, a record, a hat. Okay. What do we contrast that with? We contrast that with intermediate goods. Intermediate goods are goods that require further processing before they can be considered for consumption. So I have a picture of tires there. When uh, Chevrolet or Audi or Mercedes buys tires, those are not counted as part of GDP because those are going to be put on a car and the car is going to be bought. right? And the, and the, thing, the reason why we don't count intermediate goods is because intermediate goods uh, would lead to something known as double counting, and it would overstate the real value of our um, GDP. Things that we don't count as part of GDP. We don't count goods that are bought and sold on the black market. Okay, The most common things tend to be, uh, you know, people think about drugs and things like that, um, maybe bootleg merchandise, uh, maybe, you know, payments under the table, uh, we don't count financial transactions. Buying stocks and bonds is not counted as part of GDP. We don't count used goods. Okay, um, used goods were already counted at one point, and we want again we want to avoid double counting. And then transfer payments. Transfer payments are payments from the government to individuals. And again, if we counted that as government spending, if the government gives me a hundred dollars and we count that. Ostensibly, what am I going to do with that hundred dollars? I'm going to go and I'm going to spend it, okay? And that would be double counting. So those are the things that are not counted. And so here we go with our formula: sig x, c plus i plus g plus x n, and each of these represent a sector of society. 
C represents the consumers and its consumption spending, the things that consumers buy. I with the sub G stands for gross private domestic investment. We talk about that. We're not talking about investment the way your parents might invest. We're talking about businesses. And what do businesses invest in? Generally, they invest in capital equipment. You buy a new pizza oven. You buy a food truck. You buy a new ice cream maker. You buy a new, uh, you know, you buy sewing machines, whatever it is. You're investing in capital equipment. And remember, capital is just another way of saying tools or machines. Then we have government spending, G. And these are all purchases made by the government when they buy things for the military, when they bill, uh, spend on roads, hospitals, infrastructure, and so on. And then finally, X sub N, uh, which is net exports. The N stands for net. How do we get net? We take exports, things that we send to other countries, and we subtract imports from that, which are things that come into our country. Okay, And if we export more than we import, that would be a positive number. And of course, if we import more than we export, that would be a negative number. And for a long time, our net exports have been negative. And so this formula, C-I-G-X, SIGX, you absolutely, absolutely must, must know this front and back. Okay, The most important formula for macroeconomics. Okay, there are two other ways of calculating GDP. We're not going to do this, but you should know that they exist. Uh, okay, you're not going to be asked to do any of these, but understand that they do exist and they will come back. Um, and I'll explain how they do in, uh, in class or when, when uh, we see an example of it. The first is the value added approach. This is all of the sales that are made in a country minus the cost of the inputs, what it takes to make them. This is the one that we'll probably use the least, talk about the least. And then there's the income approach. We add up all the income earned by the factors of production. We add up rent, wages, interest, capital. Add all that together, and that is our national income, and that's another way of calculating GDP. Okay? Um, be aware of these. Don't stress out too much over them. The thing that you really need to know is that SIGX. And uh, that's module 10.